Hello. My name is Tim Hogan. I own and operate uh, Albert Exchange in Waterford, Connecticut. Uh, and this is a 90 horsepower Yamaha that we are going to be disassembling for remanufacturing. It's our first step in remanufacturing. So, in this step, I'm going to be pulling the uh, flywheel. Um, I do have a special outboard flywheel puller, but you can use a harmonic balancer puller that you can buy or rent at any auto parts store. And I use an impact, cordless impact, very handy tool. And there it is. The flywheel now comes off. You can see it exposes the electronics underneath there. And as we take this apart, we're going to be hanging all the parts on the breakdown board right there. And that's where we put our parts instead of a bin and uh, keep them from being damaged. I've already just taken all the electronics uh, off this motor, meaning the stator, trigger, power pack. Basically, the parts that give it ignition go off. This fuel system's pretty easy to disassemble and most of this stuff is self-explanatory that's why I'm stopping and starting but I'm basically going to take carburetors off fuel pump off. Okay I've taken all the bolts out of the actually the reed block and the carbs in this case are attached to that. It's always best if you can keep everything in, a, in its own assembly which I've got the fuel pump, the oil pump and the carburetors and the reeds. These are reed valves. Uh, probably when we assemble it we're going to have a good video on reed valves but uh, they seldom go bad but people do think they're Prone to failure, they're not. Uh, next, we're going to take this bottom pan off here. This is the power head cover. There's bolts going down here. I'll point them out. I'll be taking those, those out, that out. I'll be removing that, and we'll be pulling the power head. Okay, so we've unbolted the power head lower pan cover. It comes off like this and split the power head bolts. And these bolts are in the risk of breaking. So, this good to have a fire extinguisher handy. We've got them all over the shop. And uh, heat them up, and they'll come out much easier and will not break or pull. Out. So, that's what I'm going to be doing now. I should have said the reason the heat works is it's uh, aluminum expands a lot faster than steel or stainless steel. So as you see, these are coming loose. Uh, a lot of times they don't want to, and you actually have to cut them. But, uh, that's another video. All power heads are attached to an adapter. There's a seam here, and there's one in this case about two inches higher. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. People think it separates here and actually separates here so those bolts go through about three inches of the aluminum that's what makes them tough and most power heads have a hidden bolt and if you don't do it every day you're going to miss it and in this case it's right buried in there hopefully you can see it so i'm going to loosen that up all but about three threads or three or four threads and you're going to find out why it's a trick Alright, so we got the bolt loosened up. I've got the pry bar in there on the head of the bolt. Hopefully you can see that. And the bolt is loosened about, I don't know, five or six turns. And the reason for this is the power head likes to stick on. And if you just uh, uh, just try to pull it off, you're not going to have much luck. So you actually have to pry it off. And what you do is you just use that bolt as leverage and you lift up. And hopefully you can see the power head lifting up so the surface tension of the gasket is broken and it is loose now. Now I can lift, hook it up to my hoist and lift it off. All right, here goes. You can see uh, this is where the drive shaft comes up from the lower unit. All right, I'm disassembling the power head. It's on my bench now. Um, I'm going to explain to you how to tell if a bolt's going to break, which someone before me broke a bolt on here, honestly, someone before me did it, and broke a tap off in the hole, so we're going to have to deal with that. But 
Other than that, this motor's coming apart really quite nice. All right, we just found out why this motor was condemned. Uh, the customer told us that it was progressively overheating uh, every time he went fast. Um, so that's why he took this side plate off and broke off the tap and the bolt and the, uh, this is the exhaust plate. And so I'm investigating that symptom because he wants it totally remanufactured. Oh, this is the thermostat right here. I'm sure he replaced that. That is, that comes right out. That's the thermostat. Thermostat controls the temperature at low speed only. This, and it seems to be, you know, it's used, but it looks functional. And the guy did his own work, so I'm sure he investigated this. Um, but, in addition to a thermostat, there's something called a poppet that's here. This is a spring-loaded valve. And there's the spring for it. This goes here. Over there. It holds the spring-loaded, it holds this poppet in. The poppet opens and lets water free flow through the power head and through the engine and cools it at a much higher rate at high speed. And the thermostat doesn't have anything, it is not in play at high speed. This poppet is frozen in there solid, so... That was his problem. That's why he's he had years of frustration with this motor trying to fix that. I think he brought it to a few shops. They couldn't figure it out either. But that's it right there. Let's pop that out. It's probably a two dollar part. Put a new one in. A new uh, bushing. Of course, he wants us to remanufacture the motor at the same time, so we're doing that too, including paint. But you'll see every part of that process. And it should be changed with a the thermostat. If somebody didn't do that. All right, we've taken all the bolts off. We call this splitting the halves of the power head. And as doing that, basically we've taken out all the bolts. You have connecting rod bolts. Some motors have pressed together crank. That's rare. There'll be no bolts. In that case, you have to take the whole the pistons out from this side. But they're right here. They're eight millimeter. We're going to take all the pistons out now. Okay, One. all the connecting rod end caps are taken off. And then the crank should come right off. No work problems. There it is, it's out. And if you'll notice, the bearings actually align in the crank, the alignment pins, corresponding holds on the bearings. We saved the bearings for inspection. Here's some connecting rod bearings. When we're done with the job, we throw them away. No Now we can take out a piston. Got the other end of the connector rod, and there it is. This piston's in great shape. This is a 1990 motor. This piston has no real substantial wear to it. All right, we found an, an additional reason for the overheat at high speed. Remember what we talked about? That's what the customer complained about. That's why he's wanted his motor remanufactured completely. That's very rare. Usually it's has low compression, but this one ran fine at low speed and high speed it overheated. Problem progressed for years. Uh, as you remember, we removed the power head bolts. And it's right down there. And this is where the power head sat. If you didn't notice right there, we're pointing. There was a broken piece of housing. So this is the piece that broke free from the lower adapter plate. Again, that's right below the uh, power head, right there. Just chipped out, it just goes around the uh, power head bolt. And it just found itself, it lodged itself. This is the bottom of the power head. All right, here, right there. And that blocked off the water passage to the power head and prevent it from cooling at high speed. So that's the smoking gun. That's great to find. We know why this motor had to come apart. Now we can rebuild with confidence. We're going to include quizzes in our little videos. Uh, make a comment on the uh, comment section of YouTube or you can email us at info at outboardexchange.com with the answer. These rods are made in a specific way and one rod cap, that's the end part right here, will not fit any other rod in, in the whole world. 
and you can't also put it on backwards, it won't fit. And it's a jagged edge. And there's holes drilled through, if you can see right there, right there, drilled through there. I want to know how this rod is made. If you can answer that, you're very, you're pretty intuitive. Okay. We have to disassemble the midsection for cleaning and sandblasting right now. Um, this is the upper pin for the tilt. Uh, that's got to be very stubborn. As you see, it's steel inside aluminum soaked in salt water for almost 30 years. So it's not going to want to come out. So what we're going to do before we even start, we've got our punch. This is the best punch to use, by the way. It's fat. Uh, just holds more of the kinetic energy. And then again, we're going to heat. Okay, success. We heated it. It starts to move. Okay, that pin is out. And that pin that holds the tilt portion of the tilt and trim. These are the trim rods. And this tube are the only thing that holds the midsection to the mounting hardware that mounts it to the boat. So we're going to remove this, this pin and take remove the whole midsection and it's going to go in the cleaning machine. We're going to use this drift that's going to hold it together too. Take it off. I've already loosened it. So dry this out. It has to be the perfect size. It's a little big actually. I'm going to keep driving through. The pin's got to hold it together so it doesn't fall to the floor. It doesn't have to go all the way through this. By the way, this motor is really maintained. This usually doesn't come out like this. When they, uh, they call it a tilt tube, doesn't come out. Yeah, the only choice is to take each side off. You got to remove the motor from the boat, take all four mounting bolts off, remove each side. This one has given us a break tonight. There we go, that's the tilt tube. Usually much more difficult, but we got a break. Now we're ready to remove this. Tilt pins out. We're gonna remove our guide. And then just it right out. We're down to the last assembly process. And it's the most difficult, taking the lower unit apart. Here's a bearing carrier ring, or uh, it's a long spanner nut. Um, they basically never come out uh, used in even fresh water. So what you do is you break it apart and take it out and you buy a new one. So the way we break it apart, we drill, drill a ser series of holes, then we chisel it out, break it in two pieces. We're gonna be doing that, and then we're gonna use a puller and hopefully the bearing carrier comes out. Okay, success. The bearing carrier came out. Use a slide hammer in this case. Probably not the best tool for the job, but the best advice I can give you for the backyard mechanic is don't try this. Uh, you just need a lot of special tools. Uh, you can do a lot of damage. This is how I got out of the car apart by heating it with this torch. This is a uh, shrink wrap torch. Puts out a huge flame. So I, I hope you enjoyed. Um, the first section of our remanufacturing process uh, went pretty smooth, actually. Um, quite often it gets a lot tougher than that. But uh, this is a 1990 motor. Um, if it didn't have that blocked water passage, probably could have gone another 10 years. Um, you really don't have to buy a new outboard motor. Please don't. Um, get a remanufactured or bring your outboard to a reputable place that can keep it going. They're just way too expensive. So come to us, we remanufacture it. We give you a new version of old reliable.